So, the additive synthesis that we showed in the last couple of videos is great, right? It's easy to understand. It's fun to play with. It's all you really need. Why not implement it on all synthesizers? Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy. You've got to have a really fast and expensive processor to control all those numbers in real time. Remember that the demos we showed in those videos created only one note, and even then we had to compute and build the wave before actually playing it. Multiply the 12 harmonics we controlled by, say, 32 voices, and then make sure you can control them in real time. That's still pretty hard and expensive to implement. Luckily, there are some options some ways of synthesizing interesting tones that don't take dozens of oscillators and huge computing power. Probably the cheapest and least complicated is the subtractive synthesizer. Now, the concept of additive synthesis has been around for as long as the pipe organ, but subtractive synthesis has been around even longer. Actually, for as long as people have been able to talk and sing, the basic idea of subtractive synthesis is this. You start with a waveform that's already highly complex, something like the sound your vocal cords produce. Uh... And then you pass this sound through an audio filter that takes out some of the harmonics, an audio filter like the shape of your mouth. Hey. By adjusting this audio filter, you can take out or at least diminish, various parts of the harmonic spectrum that your vocal cords make. A -E -I -O. In a nutshell, that's subtractive synthesis. In the digital domain of computers, subtractive synthesis works in a very similar way. You start with a few built-in complex waveforms that are easy to describe numerically like maybe a sawtooth wave. 10987654321. Or a square wave. 10101111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111
12 and 24. Those numbers stand for decibel fall off per octave. No filter works like a brick wall, for example, passing everything below A440, but completely shutting out everything above A440. Instead, filters have a slope of effect, usually called a knee. A 24 decibel filter will have a steeper knee than a 12 decibel filter. Here's what it sounds like. Notice that the sound gets brighter as we allow more upper harmonics to come through. Also notice that if we pull the fader down too far, it'll go below the fundamental pitch and pretty much attenuate everything. The high pass filter works just the opposite of the low pass filter by attenuating the low harmonics and allowing the upper harmonics through. It can give a really buzzy effect. The band pass filter allows a narrow slice of frequencies to go through while attenuating the frequencies both above and below where the fader is. That's basically how a subtractive synthesizer works. Now, the subtractor has all the other parts of a generic synthesizer, like the DCA and the DCW and the LFO It doesn't have an effect circuit because these manipulations are better provided by other sound processors and reasons rack. And it also has a lot of other features that allow you to build really complex sounds based primarily on subtractive synthesis. The best way to learn is to explore the presets included with reason and use your textbook to figure out how the sound designers created them. So go explore and have some fun, but pay attention to the basic concepts of how you're creating your sounds.